Okay, so we check margins, everything's fine here. Proximal contacts margins, the next step is occlusion. You might think that the way to check occlusion is take articulating paper and mark on it, and that's not the first step to do. You need to become familiar with your mylar shim stock. So people say mylar, they think the clear plastic strips you use for composites. This is mylar shim stock. This is what we use for occlusion. So when the instructor asks you in clinic for your mylar, this is what they want. And what you're going to do with this, this is only uh, seven tenths of uh, seven microns thick. Your thinnest articulating foil is 12 microns thick. Most people like to mark with the big paper arches and stuff that's about 100 microns thick. It'll mark anywhere, but it'll also mark if your crown's totally out of occlusion. So it's not good for crowns at all. So what you want to use, you have this arty foil, you have red arty foil. You want to use that for adjusting your crowns. It's not available in clinic, you're going to have to supply it. They will give you articulating paper in clinic, but it's all too thick. So you want to bring your own. But the first step is to see where the contacts are before you put the crown in. So you take the crown out, you hold down, and you have the patient bite together. You see that there's good contact here on 31. With a little, you know, it, it seems open on 29, a little more pressure, maybe you ask the patient to bite firmly, it'll hold there. So when we put the crown in, we want to find the same pattern of, our, of occlusion that we're not shifting it. That should have been adjusted on the models. When we go in here and hold, it's holding on 31. On 29, it's open. We have the patient bite a little harder. It's not holding. Bite a little harder. It's finally holding. Um, so that's so close that your solution clinically would be to say, how does it feel? Are you noticing that a little bit high or not? Um, the tooth is gonna be a little sensitive, they're going to be used to the temporary. It's not a perfect solution. And some people just don't have a clue when you ask them. But, but uh, um, basically, uh, if you think it could be high, you generally want to adjust it. So let's just go through the process there. If we think it's a little bit high because it's not contacting here, well, I, the, the thing I didn't do was also to put it on the crown. We don't want to adjust the crown until we're sure it's in contact. Make sure we're not just getting artificial contact. So there's nice contact on the mesial half of the crown. There's nice contact on the distal con distal half of the crown. So smiles all around. <laughs> so we mark it and we see that there's um, a contact on the distal cusp here, on the mesial cusp, both of them on the distal marginal ridge. Um, there's a contact in the central fossa. Now one issue with the location of the contacts here is when we have all of our contacts on an incline in one direction, we're going to tend to push the tooth in that direction, okay? It means it will adjust itself quickly, it won't be high in the day, but it also means that we can shift this tooth forward and have an open contact. That's particularly a problem when we're cementing the crown on the distal tooth and the arch. Never just put it in and assume that the crown is okay if it holds the mylar, holds the mylar. Look at the pushes and the contest. Because if we're submitting the crown on 32 and the only contact is on this mesial incline, when they come back next week for their next procedure, they'll have an open contact here and ask you to redo it, okay? So you have to make sure you have a stable pattern of contacts, a tripod, a bipod, something that uh, preferably has contact on the mesial part of the tooth. So here, we've got a intercuspal position refined here. We're satisfied with that. What you don't know with a double bite tray is whether we've got excursive interference. We haven't taken a face bow, done our movement through the, all of the functional movements of the tooth. So as this patient slides to the side, they could be guiding up a lingual cusp that's a little too steep. Going over this way, they could be guiding up the lingual incline of the buccal cusp, which could be too steep. So the way to find out if that's an issue is to have the person bite on it and slide first to one side and then the other side. So if this patient bites down and it's holding, you know, I push really hard, it holds, and then slide here, it's still holding. Okay, it shouldn't be. It should be picking up anterior guides. Come out here, it's still, so it's holding through the range of movement here, and that means that we've got an excursion in the tree. I don't want to waste your time, but you would mark that, you would go through the excursive movements, you would see where, whoops, where'd our crown go? <laughs> <laughs> you would see if we got a mark there, and and right here, there's there's a slide maybe up here, but it's hard to, hard to get it 
to mark. If it doesn't mark, one thing that's recommended on a polished surface is put a little Vaseline on it. For some reason, that dissolves a little of the wax binder in here and gets it to mark a little bit better. So even though it seems like that would not mark, <laughs> it does seem to help a little bit. So if you're not getting a mark, you can take a little Vaseline on there and make sure it's blown real thin. Go through those excursion rooms. But if we got a little smear up an incline, that's what you would adjust until you put the mylar in, went through the excursive movements, and didn't get it to hold. So you could also use the bite wax that is out, the, that, those thin sheets of per uh, occlusal indicator wax.